Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back. Um, let's do a manga haul. So it's been a while, um, five months actually, since my last video. Um, I picked up quite a lot, uh, not not as much as, as you would think from me. Um, still 70 volumes. Um, been reading a couple things on uh, my Kindle as well, been going going a little bit digital but um yeah it was it, it was super good just for hold I went I went on holiday recently um so I treat myself to a Kindle um and it, you know it was quite it's, it's convenient and good to get some manga on this but you know that way it was like I read some and I was like well if I enjoy it I'm probably gonna buy the physical anyway just so I can I can have it in the collection. Um but yeah let's let's get on. Um Okay, so I'm going to start with what I'm probably most excited about right now. Um, and so in the last five months, I picked up volume uh, 29, volume 30, and volume 31 of Attack on Titan. This is actually the only series that I keep up to date with online, monthly reading the chapters. Um, I think we're at 132 just now, and this is yeah, this is still going up to one chapter 126. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty good, and um, you know it's approaching the end for sure now. Um, the last season of the anime has just been announced uh, in December this year to begin, and yeah, it's definitely one I would recommend the manga for. Yeah, another cool thing that happened though was when I was in Italy, I just randomly saw this um, version of Volume Thirty One. Um, I'm not even going to say that, I'm going to embarrass myself. But yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, I, can't really, I didn't really pick up that much of the language, but I thought it was just a nice souvenir to have. Um, one of the annoying things is, though, this was like €4.90, Euros 90, and that's just that's like half price on what it costs in English. So that's a bit of a bummer, to be honest. But anyway, pretty cool. Pretty cool just to have. Another series I've been loving recently is... To Your Eternity. Um, I think there's an anime coming, I think it was supposed to come out this season, but I think it got postponed to next year. To Your Eternity. Um, I have volume 7, volume 8, 9, 10, and 11. I really love the kind of aesthetic going on with these covers. Um, yeah, really interesting series. Same uh, creator as A Silent Voice. That when we look at the the art style there, this one's so much better than A Silent Voice, though, in my opinion. Um, much more action packed fantasy series. Really cool premise. This um, orb being comes in and basically it can then take the form of anyone who it gets close to and dies around it. So then it can kind of shape shift and change into different people from its past. Um, and that goes on, you know, to be quite a powerful weapon almost. Um, but yeah, it gets pretty dark. Obviously, people die a lot in it. Well, like almost every volume, somebody dies. Um, so you kind of don't get too attached to the main characters. But still, a really, really good series. Absolutely love it. Um, I think volume 12 is out, or almost out. So I'll be sure to pick that one up soon as well. Okay, next up we have volumes... Um, Three, four, and five of Inuyashiki. Um, this I absolutely love the manga for this. It's what this is one of the series that, that you can just read the volume in like fifteen minutes. I think it's just the style of it. Um, you know, there's maybe not that much text. Um, and yeah, this is by the creator of Gantz, and I've not read that yet. But what I can say is that this artist is super talented. And it's some of the two page spreads which really gets me. Um there's quite a lot of kind of spoilers. Oops, doesn't matter. Um But yes, there's some really nice two page spreads in this series um that you just you know, you just have to sit and admire it for a few seconds. Um it's so nice. Um yeah, I think it's a ten volume completed series and uh, the, the anime is on, on Amazon Prime as well. Um, it's an old man who's kind of depressed about stuff and he thinks he's going to die soon and then some asteroid drops and he gets becomes kind of superhuman um, becomes a kind of hero 
and the story goes from there. He meets other people like him and dun dun dun, they might not all be heroes. Oh no. Okay, next up we have a shoujo title. We have Yona of the Dawn, volumes one and two. I was really surprised by how much I loved this series. Even after the first volume, honestly, like give it a chance, just one volume and that kind of hooked me. Just, just how like fast paced the series is as well. It feels like a lot's happened just in these two volumes and I'm like already quite hooked on the series and can't wait to read more. I think we're up in the 20s with this series already, um, so I have a lot to catch up on. I also have Ajin, um, volume 14, probably one of my favourites, uh, Seiren series. Absolutely love this art. Interesting concept where there's some uh, demi-humans in this world who, you know, they don't really die and the main character turns out to be one of them. Again, kind of political um, weapon stuff goes on with it, but really good, really good series. Um, another one of my favourites uh, is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Series like this I'll always try to keep up to date with. I think I've like I've read all this, I read this one on the Shonen Jump app, but of course I'll pick them up because they're really nice editions. Um, see, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put this out there. I think that part four is the best so far. And then it goes part three, part one, and part two has been my least favourite so far. Um, but yeah, this one really stands out. I don't, I don't know why. Um, I think, it, well, maybe just the characters. Um, and it's kind of more lighthearted in nature. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's even even sillier than usual. Um, just really relaxing to read. Um, yeah, just always enjoyable. Um, I think volume 6 is out for this one as well, so I'll need to get that one soon too. Next up we have a new series that I'm experiencing first time with the manga, and that is Dr. Stone. Um, if you guys know me, um, I have a degree in theoretical physics, so I am quite a sciencey person. So it's one of these series that I always knew that I would like and I was kind of just holding off on it for a wee while. I was going to just wait till a load of a load of volumes came out so I could do a big binge read. And then one day I was just kind of bored so I thought I'd, I'd watch the anime for it. And you know I watched all 24 episodes and I loved it. So few figured that it was going to be a series that I was going to get the manga for now. So yeah, first three volumes of that. Um, a lot to catch up on, but it's really good art. It's really it's it's quite funny as well. Um, you know they're trying to rebuild civilization um, from the ground up basically, and some of this like some of the science is questionable, but some some of it's quite you know good. They've clearly put a bit of work into getting some background knowledge into the series. Um, I think that it, it it goes off in a, a really crazy way with you know space travel and things as well, which is going to be even more interesting. So I am definitely excited to pick up the rest of this one. And now we have another series I was doing my best to keep up to date with, um, and that's Children of the Whales. So I've got volume 9, 10, 11, how nice, how nice is that? 12. Children of the Whales is it, honestly, the covers are top notch, probably some of my favourite in all of manga. Um, not enough people are reading this series, to be honest. Um, it's, yeah, a lot of people, I've not, not really heard a lot of people talking about it, but it's so good. It's very, you know, it's similar to um, The Two Year Eternity. It's kind of, you know, it has this art style of being like a light series. Everything's, you know, colourful and pretty. But, you know, it's got this really dark undertone and, you know, interesting things are going on, political stuff, um, magic, um, yeah, char character development, very good stuff going on. Yeah, I really like this one. I've, I've no idea if it's on its way to end, but it's definitely, it definitely kind of stopped abruptly at the end of this volume, kind of like a cliffhanger, so need to get caught up to that one soon. Um, but yeah, genuinely absolutely gorgeous series and would recommend if you're not picking it up. It's got an anime out on Netflix if you want to check it out to see if you like it first. And now 
one of my favourite mangaka, I would say. Um, and you know, Asano put out Downfall in the last few months. Um, I really, I actually really, really like this one. Um, you know, people were saying, oh no, it's really sad and depressing, but I didn't really think it was, especially if you're, you know, when you're used to like, pun good night pun pun. Um, yeah, it kind of. I think it's kind of autobiographical. It's a little uh, glimpse into the, the, you know, the reality behind the, the the creator. You know how you know how if someone's writing a manga series, it kind of takes over their life. You know their relationships and things are going to suffer because of that. You know different hardships just in life. But yeah, definitely really good read. Recommend. I picked up another series by him just to kind of. Get his full get his full works in English because I do quite like his stuff. Um, maybe I felt sorry for him if, if you know a downfall was about him. He's like, oh, I need to sell more more manga, so I thought I'd buy more to support him. You know, um, what a wonderful world! I think this is, was the first one that got published in English. Um, kind of just short story collection, not not the best thing I've ever read ever. Um, if you're a fan of his, I definitely say pick it up, but. Not not like my biggest recommendation by Asano. If you were going to say that if if you've not read any of his works, I would say Solomon is the first one you should go for. That's a good series. Um, now I have something quite exciting, something I've not read yet, and that is Twentieth Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. This one I've been hearing about it for so long. So many good recommendations about this series and you know it's been back and forth I was debating should I try and find all the singles online or should I just you know wait and, and buy all these um, deluxe editions when they come out and I'm quite glad I, I waited and got these because they're really really nice I'm quite excited to start reading this one a lot of people say this is better than Monster um, who knows um, it definitely sounds more like my kind of thing. I think it's kind of time travelly. So yeah, and I'm also thinking, should I start reading it now or should I wait until it all gets released? We must almost be finished. Um, I think I saw like nine is coming out. And I think there's only around 20, 22 volumes. So yeah, we must almost be finished. So I might start reading this one sometime soon. But yeah, they're all they're all just beautiful additions. And you know, I was just I haven't treated myself in a while so I just thought I'd, I'd pull the trigger and get these ones um, so yeah that's these 20th century boys, love the spines they look really good and that's them I also saw this um, I think I got this used for a really good price um, Master Keaton by Naoki Urasawa I think it, maybe just the art is by him and the, the story is by someone else um, I have heard good things about it though so excited to hear um, I haven't read this one yet um, but it's putting me off because I'm really stingy and these volumes are quite thin and they're 12 99 so I haven't bought more of them when I really should. Let's do another big uh, stack. Uh, I found this like a lot on eBay for quite a good price, um, Pandora Hearts. We have volumes 1 to 12. Um, you know, the artwork's pretty good. I'm already quite excited about it. Um, and it seems to be quite cool, supernatural vibes. Um, you know, this main character he gets transported into this other dimension, um, known as the abyss, and you know he has to make a contract with someone down there in order for them to both escape. I'm in this you know, Pandora's box kind of thing. Um, not sure where it's going to go, but you know, super excited. Um, I've just started reading volume one tonight actually, and I'm going to go through a few of these. I think. Um, yeah, and if I like it, I'll probably just pick up uh, the rest of the series just in the singles. There is a really nice deluxe set for Pandora Hearts, which made me think, you know, it's worth it's worth at least checking out. Um, but yeah, the singles are really nice covers as well, so I, you know I don't want to miss out on on the nice covers too if I like it. So we'll see if I enjoy it. Some more stuff. This is this has been one of my favourite volumes in the last couple of months. Something I really would recommend. Um, How do we relationship? By Tammy Full. Never heard of them. Um, yeah, this is like a Yuri series, um, and it's actually, you know, it involves two adults who've just gone to college, and it's like they're both from small towns, and now they're moved um, for college. And it, you know, it starts. It's one of these ones where it's not going to be like, well, they won't they. They actually they kind of get together quite quickly 
and it's about navigating how to actually, you know, be in a relationship with a woman. Um, you know, one of them is kind of comfortable with it, one of them isn't, and just really, really good, really funny, um, wholesome. Really recommend this one. Um, I think it's more for like adult readers. I'd say if you're getting bored of high school romances, I would definitely recommend that one. Um, another um, Yuri I picked up is Whenever Our Eyes Meet. Um, this is an anthology, and you know that way it's like. I, like I did enjoy reading this, so this is just like loads of short stories, like women's love and like short stories. Um, I feel like I did have a good time reading it, but I'm like I'm not sure. Um, like I don't really know what happened. I didn't really get invested to any of the characters. I think I think I'm just not a fan of anthologies, to be honest. I much prefer to like get proper invested in in some characters um, in the storyline. But nah, I'm gonna I'll probably sell that one on. Um, Oh, one series which is again absolutely amazing. One of the best series I've read this year, Our Dreams at Dusk. Um, I only have volume one in physical. Uh, it was one of these things I just I read it and then I was like, well, I kind of want to know what happens, so I just picked like got the rest of them on my Kindle. Um, but then you know I regret it because I want to get them physically as well because it's probably turned out to be one of my favourite series. Um, yeah, this is a really good LGBT one. It's not just like the main character thinks he's gay. It's like there's loads of different characters in it. It follows some high school people, some like you know middle aged people, some like old people as well, and the different you know the difference in society and coming out, I suppose, um, and all those different age ranges. Um, just yeah, really good. Highly recommend. Another one. Um, here we have A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow. Um, this is another Girls Love Yuri title. Uh, this one is a high school one, um, which I no don't normally like, but I really like this one. Um, it's You can see it's just so, so soft. It's such a soft series. It's just so like wholesome and feel good. And I just, you know, I just really love, you know, the three volumes I've read so far. Um, it's just It's just about an aquarium club and it's just so, it's just so chill. Um, nice, like it, it's good, we'll get more definitely. Um, here's one I've not read yet, R.G. Veda by Clamp. This is Clamp's first, like I think I was, I wanted to get into Clamp and then I wasn't sure where to start and then people suggested this one and then I found that this was like the first one and I'm all about that chronological order. Um, so I thought I'd check out just this one, it's actually quite a nice release by Dark Horse um, and seems quite really like what the hell's going on with that art style jesus man it's so old um pretty cool yeah i do want to read some more classic series actually i feel like i need to go back I appreciate manga from the ground up you know where did it where did it start how did, how did it get here shop um but yeah we'll see I'm not sure if i'm a big clamp fan or not yet but we shall see some more Dark Horse ones um, that I haven't got around to reading yet, but know that I'll enjoy is Mob Cycle 100. We have volumes 2, 3 and 4. Really, really vibing with this cover. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Mob Cycle 100. Um, it is an interesting art style and the anime is really good, but I think the manga is designed to be a manga, I think. To be honest, yeah, I mean, I've only read the first volume and I've watched mm, maybe like 10 episodes of the anime, but I don't know, I just feel like some of the gags, you know, it's a, it's a comedy series, it's, you know, I, just the delivery of it is just much better in, in manga form, um, just some comparisons I made there. Um, so yeah, would recommend manga version of this. The anime's still good though, so it's still a good time. Um, okay, last couple of things now we have... Volume uh, 17 of Black Butler. Uh, this is one I was missing. I think I've got up to volume 20 now. Still a little bit behind. Um, these ones are kind of expensive, so I don't tend to like bulk buy these. Um, like it was really uh, this few series. I feel like I had a really good start, and then I had like a questionable circus period. But now it's gone to like a, a boarding school kind of scene, and it's like really, really next level. Like the, this arc that we're in is like probably my favourite so far. Yeah, so I'm quite enjoying how this series is like changing and evolving, growing. Um, yeah, I need to catch up with it. Some more things. We have 
Requiem of the Rose King Volume 1. I haven't gotten around to reading this one yet, but I've heard nothing but good reviews over this. Um, it's a kind of Shakespeare inspired or a retelling um, of a Shakespeare story, um, you know, set in, set in medieval England. Um, yeah, I still need to check it out and see and see if I'll be diving in any more um, to this one. Finally, we have volumes 11, 12, 13 and 14 of Nana. Um, almost, almost there. Um, I think there's only 21 volumes. Um, this, of course, is like the massive queer bait that is Nana and it's not even finished so we don't even know. You know, it's pretty. It's int It's weird because like I like I like the characters. I'm invested and I like the story. But I just feel like reading it. It's so like slow paced and some of these were kind of a struggle to get through. Even though I did enjoy them at the end. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to pick up the rest. I might just kind of read online and see what happens because I'm kind of like well, there's no point because it's not a completed series anyway. Yeah, major kind of meh. I wanted to love it. Loads of people love it. I didn't really love it. It's okay. It's okay. Bit of an interesting pick up. I wanted to get back into learning Japanese, so I saw this on a used bookstore. It was like a bilingual version, but I think it's designed for like Japanese people learning English, not the other way around. So it's like written big in English and little in Japanese, so it's probably it's a bit of a waste, but I don't know. I might get back into it. Yeah, it might be a bit useful. Um, pretty cool anyway, just to have. It obviously kind of came from Japan, so it's kind of cool. I haven't read Cat. Heard Captor Sakura yet, but maybe maybe if I read this, I want to to collect the nice um, Dark Horse uh, omnibus versions. Okay, um, so that's pretty much all the manga I picked up. Um, one final thing, I don't like talk about books that much on this channel, but I do like I do like reading just like regular novels as well. Um, and one that I pick, picked up and read um, while I was had some time off recently, I just want to mention um, the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, Probably the best book I've read in a while. Um, yeah, I'd really recommend this. It's it's Matt Haig has written a lot about his experience with mental health, and so there's you can always you always kind of get mental health vibes in his fiction works as well. Um, so in this one, there's this main character. She's like a woman in her thirties, and she kind of just loves loves alone with a cat, um, and she she's really really depressed, suffers a lot um, with um, depression, and she you know, decides that she doesn't want to live anymore and um, makes this decision and, um, you know, tries to end her life. But while this happens, she gets flung into... Why am I showing? Oh my God, look at the... What am I doing? Um, yeah, she gets flung into the Midnight Library. Basically, the school librarian, um, you know, has... We have all these books and she's like, okay, so what do you want to change about your life? And then she, you know, gives her these books and says, okay, she made this one um, different decision. This is how her life would go. You know, maybe if she pursued music instead of going to university if she um didn't if she went on this date if she if she left her boyfriend if she you know stuck at sports or whatever what would her life look like um and it was just really cool she just zipped into different lives and ends up kind of reflecting learning a lot about herself and a pretty cool ending if I do say so just you know just a really good read I was I like just devoured this in a few a few days um yeah, really recommend. But that's all. But yeah, okay, that's enough chat. Um this is all. That's it. Bye.